1965 was a year of promise. At the end of the season, many experts called the Bears the mightiest team in football. Narrowly missing the championship, the Chicago Bears were voted the outstanding comeback in sports in 1965. After two successive losses, the Bears meet their bitter rivals, the Green Bay Packers. The unbeaten pack zooms to a 23 to nothing advantage, but in the third period, the Bears come out of hibernation as Bukic throws to Ditka for five. Bukic swings the ball out on the right flat to Gale Sayers, and it's good for a six-yard game. Running Andy Livingston explodes through that heralded Green Bay defense as he wrecks the pack on a 28-yard run. On an inside handoff, Livingston picks up six more yards the hard way. Bukic fires a pass to flanker back Johnny Morris, and the Bears are inside the Green Bay 20. Gail Sayers begins to strut his stuff, and he makes it goal to go for Chicago at the five. <laughs> Sayers, the Kansas Comet, outflanks a pair of crack packer backs as he sweeps into the end zone to put the Bears on the scoreboard. In the fourth quarter, Bukic continues the Bears' comeback bid. Rudy finds Sayers wide open. The pass nets 16 yards. Bukic and Sayers come back now and hit with the play of the day. A sensational 65-yard touchdown pass. Watch this. It's a beauty. Chicago's rally, however, falls short 23-14. But the Bears came of age during that second half with a terrific team effort that carried on during 1965. Yes, revenge was sweet. And as we turn back to the opening game at Wrigley Field to beat the Rams, who inflicted one of the early losses, the Bears' new team vigor is turned loose again. Here, Rudy Bukic opens a drive against the Rams with a pass to Mike Ditka. Good for 10 yards. Veteran quarterback Bukic pairs with Andy Livingston for another 12 yards. Livingston, the youngest player in the NFL, riddles the Rams' renowned fearsome foursome as he gouges out a 17-yard game. Bukic, the 11-year veteran, and Livingston, a 20-year-old youngster, dominate the first quarter as the Bears threaten on the Rams' two-yard line. Livingston picks up the pace in the second period with a touchdown plunge, which gives the lead to the Bears. Same quarter, same stars, Bukic throwing, Livingston receiving, and Chicago prospering to the tune of 22 yards. When the Rams brace, the Bears get a kick out of Roger LeClaire to lead Los Angeles 10 to nothing. Third period highlights feature Gale Sayers. The 198-pound halfback takes a screen pass from Bukic and leaves a flock of Rams strewn in his wake. Still going. And Ditka delivers the final block as Gale goes 80 yards to the end zone. That play was so exciting, we'll run it again. Sayers gives us a good look at his all-pro prowess as he prances past the Rams. We enlist the aid of some movie magic to point up Mike Ditka's path-paving block. With the final obstacle obliterated, Sayers strides out to a touchdown. A final period Ram rally is squashed before it starts. Richie Pettibone belts that ball out of the arms of Marlon McKeever. Earl Leggett wraps his 265-pound frame around it and gives Chicago possession. On a reverse pitch out to the weak side, Livingston and the Bears fleece the Rams and it's goal to go from the Los Angeles 7. 
Livingston is having a fine time attacking the Los Angeles flanks. And he circles the near corner, and it takes a trio of Rams to turn him on. Faking at its finest, pulls the entire defense. Bookage waltzes into the end zone with nary a Ram in sight, and Chicago leads 24-6. to Roman Gabriel attempts to get the Rams rolling, but McKeever and Pettibone stage an encore of their hit and fumble act. Davey Whistle grabs the loose ball while the Rams return to the Wailing Wall. Bookage pitches off the Sayers at Whoa, whoa, watch it now. Gail throws, and rookie Dick Gordon bags the ball for a final score as the Bears top Los Angeles 31-6. Adding machines are the order of the day as the offense-oriented Vikings match their scoring power against the freewheeling Bears who begin a first quarter drive with Sayers darting to the Viking 33. <laughs> Chicago's Ronnie Bull looks more like a deer as he speeds through the Minnesota secondary to give the Bears an early edge. Roger LeClaire kicks off to Minnesota. Tom Hall's return is cut short by Ron Smith's necktie tackle. Hall fumbles, and Charlie Bevins grabs the ball for the Bears. On the very next play, Bukic makes the fumble payoff in points as he spears Johnny Morris in the end zone to put Chicago on top by 14. In the second period, the purple and white begin to fight. Tarkenton follows a field goal with a screen pass to Bill Brown, and this Viking goes hiking for a 26-yard gain. Francis Tarkenton, who wrote the word scramble into the football glossary, takes off on one of his famous helter-skelter scampers. The Georgia Peach covers some 45 yards on this run, but winds up with just a 10-yard gain. The battling Bears force Tarkenton into a strategic retreat. But Frantic Brand is famous for his scrambling antics, and he evades the Bears' trap for a first down at the four-yard line. Tommy Mason tacks up a touchdown as Minnesota closes the gap to 14 to 10. It's 17-16 in the third period as Tarkenton prepares to pass. Paul Flatley is his receiver, and he gets 38 yards before being tackled by Witzel and McCray. Pigskin pyrotechnics explode at Metropolitan Stadium. Romping Bill Brown tears through the Bears for 40 thrilling yards to give the Vikings a 23-17 lead. Bukic takes a page out of Tarkenton's book, and fighting fire with fire, Rudy ad-libs a 24-yard advance. On a rollout pass pattern, Bukic zips that ball to Johnny Morris, and the Bears are threatening. From the Minnesota 18, the threat reaches a peak. Bukic pairs with Sayers, and the Bears are back in front. The spotlight camera shines on Sayers as we rerun that last play. It was in this game that Gale began to gather his rave reports, and the reasons are obvious. Bill Brown spearheads a fourth quarter comeback by the Vikings as the fireplug fullback churns out 31 torrid yards. With the ball in the Chicago nine, the Bears chase Tarkenton out of the pocket. But the slippery escape artist breaks free and goes out of bounds at the one yard line. On fourth down, the daring Tarkenton fakes Mason up the middle and takes off around end. Fran just beats Butkus to regain the lead for Minnesota. A 
However, the record Twin City audiences barely settle down before Gale Sayers brings the crowd back to its feet, returning the kickoff into Viking territory. On a weak side counterplay, Ronnie Bull rips off a seven yard gain. Now it's Bull with the pitch out, taking a pass and reversing his field for 12 more yards. Nine minutes remain in the game as the Bears recapture the lead with Bukich throwing to Gale Sayers for the touchdown that makes it Chicago 31, Minnesota 30. Once more, our spotlight camera focuses on Gale Sayers as we retrace his route to the end zone. Gale's second touchdown gives Chicago its third lead. The plucky Vikings come surging back with Bill King busting to the Bears 37. On a third down, long yardage situation, the Vikings receive a big break. Parkinson's pass falls incomplete, but the penalty flag falls too, and it's first and goal on the Chicago Four. Tommy Mason gives the lead back to Minnesota, and with just two and a half minutes to play, the Bears trail by six. Viking fans are feeling rather smug at this point, but they're whistling past the graveyard. For the Bears they thought they had buried, come to life in a hurry. It's Gallup and Gale Sayers to the rescue as the most exciting runner to explode on the NFL scene in years. Jets 96 yards to a touchdown. Sayers heroics makes the score. Bears 38, Vikings 37. Minnesota refuses to crumble. Mason cranks out an 11-yard advance as the Vikings fight to get into that field goal range. A fierce rush forces Tarkin to hurry his pass. Rookie Dick Buckus, the new king of the middle linebackers, intercepts and sprints deep into Viking territory. With time running out, Gale Sayers cements his superstar status as he storms to his fourth TD of the day. Gale literally sails into the end zone to climax a pulse-pounding win for the Bears. The Packers are unbeaten as they enter the lair of the Bear, bent on continuing their unblemished slate. Bart Starr gets Green Bay off on the right foot with a 33-yard run. Bart sees stars when belted by Rosie Taylor. Jim Taylor adds nine more yards, but he can't escape the vice-like grip of Dick Butkus. Taylor goes over the top with a touchdown to give Green Bay an early advantage. In the second period, Starr's pass is deflected by Leggett and intercepted by Atkins as the tide turns. <laughs> Livingston outflanks the Green Bay defense with a pitch out that's good for a seven yard gain. The slow motion camera captures the raw power of Chicago's Andy Livingston. And he charges on and flicks Doug Hart off and continues on his way for 18 yards. <laughs> Sayers slashes through a yawning hole to bring the ball to the Green Bay 13. Rudy Bukic passes the Bears to the front with a scoring shot to the Wisconsin rookie, Dick Jones. That same play as seen by Green Bay's Doug Hart presents a different picture. It's one Hart would like to forget.
forced to play catch up. Stars toss is stolen by Benny McRae, who beats a path back to the Green Bay 37. Rudy Bukic hits Johnny Morris on an out pattern that's good for a first down. For a change of pace, you'll have to look long and hard to top this one by Andy Livingston, who makes the corner for another first down. The blazing speed of Gail Sayers keynotes this score as Gail beats Herb Adderley in a foot race to the flag. At the half, the Bears lead 17 to 10. In the third quarter, we see Don Chandler punting for the pack. Arnett gives Sayers a block. And Sayers gives Green Bay a fifth. Gale goes 62 yards before Bob Jeter nails him from the rear. We saw Arnett block, now watch him run. John makes it goal to go from the Green Bay two. The final yards come easy for John Arnett, who boosts the Bears into a commanding 24 to 10 position. Late in the period, the Bears are on the prowl again, with Arnett doing yeoman service for 12 yards. Mike Pyle and Jim Cadillo blast a hole in the Green Bay line. Arnett shoots through the gap and the Bears are giving their fans something to shout about. Ronnie Bull goes to work in the fourth quarter and Green Bay's winning ways are evaporating. It's the Bears who own the winning streak now as they make it four in a row and bounce back into title contention by crushing the powerful Packers 31 to 10. Memorial Stadium is a madhouse and the fans are having a field day. If you have a ticket, you're really in. The first time they touch the ball, the Bears begin to growl. Bookie zipping a pass to Dick Gordon and the play covers 29 yards. Now in his 11th year, watch Woody Bookie, who came on to become the leading passer in the NFL. His play calling was imaginative. His passing peerless, and as you can see, Rudy can run. The Chicago Express appears touchdown bound as Sayers tears goalward, but a collision with Ronnie Bull derails the Bears as Bobby Boyd recovers in the end zone for a touchback. After forcing the Colts to kick, the Bears begin another drive with Ronnie Bull getting four tough yards. Get set for the play of the day, and the man of the minute is the rookie of the year, Gail Sayers. 61 mercurial yards give the lead to the Bears. In the second period, Lenny Moore gets a shoulder full of Dick Butkus, and this is more than Lenny can stomach. He fumbles, and it's a tailor-made recovery for the Bears, with things looking rosy for Chicago. A disillusioned Mike Ditka returns to the bench after the Bears fumble the ball back to Baltimore. Gary Quasso is the Colt quarterback, but he cannot cope with the Chicago secondary. Richie Pettibone intercepts as the Bears set up on the Baltimore 32. Sayers, who scored a record 22 touchdowns to lead the NFL in scoring, gets loose on the outside for a 17-yard gain. With just 27 seconds left in the half, Bukic connects with Johnny Morris at the five-yard line. 
Time forces the Bears to settle for a field goal, and LeClaire gives Chicago a 10 to nothing lead at the half. In the third quarter, Leggett, Evie, and Atkins lower the boom on Gary Quazzo to stall a Baltimore drive. The title-conscious Colts attempt a field goal, but Michaels misses the mark as the brilliant Bear defense keeps Baltimore off the board. Bukic sparks the Bears with a pass to Chicago's top receiver, Johnny Morris. The dynamic little flanker is persistence personified as he refuses to go down. Sayers was second only to Jim Brown in the NFL's ground-gaining derby. Gale gained 867 yards rushing for the season, with 13 of them coming on this sweep. Given superb protection, Bukic threads the needle on a 15-yard completion to Jimmy Jones. A bare favorite, the swing pass. Bukic to Bull adds a nifty nine yards to the Chicago cause. Stifled by penalties, the Bears salvage a field goal by LeClaire to lead 13 to nothing after three quarters. The bruising Bear defense continues to contain the Colts. Stan Jones clobbers Quazzo and Baltimore is forced to punt again. Tom Gilbert boots the ball to the Bears. Sayers, who was second in both kickoff and punt returns, takes it back into Baltimore territory. Fortunato, Atkins, and Morris get a brief rest, but late in the game, the defenders are back in business. Guazzo passes complete to Jimmy Orr, but Butkus and McRae force a fumble. Joe Fortunato recovers to wrap up one of the most satisfying wins of the season as the Bears blank Baltimore 13 to nothing. The season was simply too short for the Bears. After avenging the first three defeats at the start of the season, the team came through with nine thrill-packed wins out of the next ten games. Rookies and veterans alike gelled into a winning combination, and the Chicago Bears were officially honored as the outstanding comeback in sports for 1965.